Hello, everyone. This is Tara with Northwest Association for Blind Athletes and get ready for our core stability class today. We are so excited. This is going to be a flow style. So we're going to just jump through all of the different moves until the hour is up. So I'm going to play some music. All right. How is this line in conjunction with my voice? Can you hear me? Oh, Tint get loud? Is a tint right. loud? Yes, tint get loud. How's that? Perfect. Better. Yep. Okay. All right. So to start, we're gonna do. We'll start with a a flow pull down type or warm up type flow, and then that will just go straight into our exercises. So the warm up kind of flows into exactly what we're doing today. So. To start for core stability, you just want to start with some deep breaths, get into the, mo the right mindset. So take some deep breaths at your own pace. Standing tall, comfortable position, hands by my side. And when you're ready, we're going to lift our arms up to the sky, push our chest forward just a little bit. Continue these deep breaths. If you feel the need to sway a little bit, feel free to sway or rock from heel to toe. All right, bring your hands down by your side and we're gonna go again. And I want you to sweep your arms up, out to the sides and then above your head. So breathe in, arms up. Continue some breaths up here and release your hands, continuing at your own pace. All right, from here, hands up to the sky, and we are going to bend our hands up and over our head to our left, and dip our hips over to the right to create a C shape, side body stretch. Come back to center and opposite side. Reach hands up and over to the right. Push your hips to the left. And move back and forth at your own pace with your own breath. Getting these side body stretches. All right, now we're gonna go into a little bit of a back stretch. So you're going to reach your arms forward, tuck your chin to your chest and arch your back as if you're doing a standing cat pose. And then we'll arch out your back like a standing cat pose. This time you can put your hands on your low back to really arch your chest forward or cow pose. Yep. So go back and forth between the standing cat pose and the standing cow pose. Our back is crucial here in our core work, so getting that warmed up a little bit, waking it up. All right, now we're gonna take a deep breath. We're gonna sweep our hands up to the ceiling, breathe in, and then as you breathe out, you'll go into a forward fold, reach towards your toes. a few breaths and then we'll go into a halfway lift so putting your hands on your ankles and then slowly lifting your back halfway up so your hands your hands draw up your shins and then release back down to touch your toes seeing if you can get a little bit deeper in the stretch this time and flow through that at your own pace so halfway lift up and then reaching down However long it feels good to hold, however slow it feels to get into those positions, take that for your own. All right, we're gonna get moving and grooving here. So I'm gonna stand up tall here, and then I'm going to reach my arms up, go into that halfway, that um, toe touch position, 
But this time I'm gonna step my hands out, step my feet back, and go into a plank position. A plank position. Yep, and then from your plank position, you're gonna go into a downward dog. So lift those okay. hips up. And then come back down to those planks and flow through some planks with downward dog. At your own pace. Deep breath. Keeping your back straight when you get down into that plank and really pushing those hips up and heels down for that downward dog. All right. Now from your plank position, you're going to step your left foot forward and this will bring you into a low lunge. So drop your right knee to the ground, left leg forward and push your hips forward to get a nice hip stretch here. Being mindful not to extend your knee too far past your toes so your knee isn't taking tension here. When you're ready, you're gonna shift your weight back, straighten your left leg, and it, so my weight is now back towards my um, towards my right foot, and then I'm gonna flex my left toe so that my toes point to the ceiling. So sitting back almost on my right foot, left leg straight, toes flexed. And then I'm going to switch. So I'm going to step my left foot back, right foot up into a low lunge position. And opening my hips here. Keeping my right knee so that it's not extending past my toes. Then I'm going to shift my weight back. Straighten my right leg, right toes point towards the ceiling. My left leg is still bent. And when you're ready, come out of that and come to a standing position. I'm gonna get a sip of water. And we're gonna get into some faster flows. How's the volume, are we still okay? Yes, we are. Okay. Not sure I did that last one correctly, but. <laughs> as long as you're feeling a stretch and it feels good, then all is well. <laughs> it's good, yeah. All right, yep. so we're gonna speed things up here a little bit. So take them as fast or as slow as you would like, but just know you have that option to go faster. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a high knee stepping back into a lunge. So I'm gonna take my right knee and do a high knee, and then I'm gonna step my right knee back and go into a low lunge, come back up and repeat. So right knee, high knee, step back, lunge. Right knee, high knee, step back, lunge. Feel free to put your arms into a T, hands on your hips, whatever works best for you to help you balance. This one can be tricky. All right, and switch, bring those feet back together, left side now, left side, high knee, step back into a lunge. So when you're in that lunge, make sure your knees are 90 degrees, your front knee is not over, your toe, or past your toes rather. Big balance, you engage your core here to help balance you, center your body. And come out of that. Now we're gonna do another balance exercise to help with the core strength. You're going to bounce on your right foot, 
Put your arms in a T and then raise your left foot out to the side as high as you can. Using your arms to help balance you and hold for a few breaths. Try to keep that chest out, core engaged. And switch sides, bounce on the left foot, arms in a T, lift that right leg. One side might be easier to balance than the other. Keeping those hips tucked, belly button pulled in, core engaged. And release, shake it out water all right now we're gonna go into some curtsy squats so curtsy squats you start with your feet with your heels together and toes apart and then you'll step your left foot back bend both knees and then we'll repeat so feel free to go ahead and do your curtsy squats feel free to alternate feet or just continue on one side until I say to switch. So toes should be pointed out when you come up and when you go down. Keeping your shoulders up, chest up, really squeezing your belly button in. What was that? Is that like a lunge, like where you put the one foot behind the other foot? Yep, it is. Yep, it's a rendition of a lunge. It's just with your toes pointed outward. Right, okay. Taking care of doing it right. Yep. All right, and if you were doing the same leg, we're going to switch now. If you're alternating every other, feel free to alternate continually. All right, one more. And then we're gonna stand up and we're gonna do a combo move. So crescent lunge to warrior. So crescent lunge is you're going to have your right foot forward, left foot back, toes are pointed forward. So a typical lunge, right? But then your back leg is gonna be straight. So you have that 90 degree bend in your right leg, left leg is straight back. Lift your hands up to the ceiling and push your chest forward. This is crescent lunge. You're gonna go from here to then shift your weight all the way to your right foot. Balance on your right foot and then lift your left foot back up behind you and reach your arms and torso forward. This is a huge balance exercise. If you can only hover your left leg off the ground a few inches, that's okay. And then we'll repeat at our own pace. So crescent lunge, deep bend in the front knee, straight leg in the back leg, pushing chest forward, arms up, into warrior three, balancing on your right leg, arms forward, left leg pointed straight behind you, big bounce exercise. Moving through at your own pace. Couple more. All right, switch sides. This time, left foot forward, right foot back, left leg bent, right leg straight. Arms to the ceiling. Push that chest out. And then Rotate into your warrior three so that you're bouncing on your left leg as a hinge. Right leg comes up, arms go forward. Nice job.
All right. Shake it out. We're gonna get into some sumo squats. So you're gonna have your toes point outward till diagonals like 10 and two. Sink your bottom down so that your knees bend to 90 degree angles. I'm gonna have my hands on my hips. I want you to try to take your tailbone and curl it under. So you're really pulling your belly button in, curling your tailbone forward towards the front of your body and then get into that bend. You wanna keep your chest up here. And we're gonna do some squats here. So feel free to either squat or do pulses. So you can do 10 squats coming up to straight legs, or you can pulse, which means staying in your squat, raising a couple inches, and then sinking even deeper. So go ahead and choose to either come all the way up or stay in that squat and pulse. Mindful of your knees, not arching over your toes, keeping that tailbone tucked. Nice job. Also, now continue doing what you're doing. If you'd like to raise your heels and bounce on your toes while you do this, that is an extra challenge option to take that one those two heels up. The inner, my inner thighs are starting to shake. That means that I'm getting stronger. My muscles are feeling fatigued. And shake it out. All right, we're gonna go into a plank here. here. So get some water, shake out anything you need. Your muscles should be nice and warm and we'll get into a plank. So our plank series here, I'll explain what we're gonna do before you get in it. Um, we're gonna start in a plank, and then after we're done doing our plank, we're gonna add some leg lifts. So just lift your right leg up off the ground, put it down, lift your left leg up off the ground, and put it down. So you'll be doing those. After that, you're gonna go into some push-ups. Feel free to take it to the knees or take it to a wall to do these push-ups. From there, we're gonna take it into mountain climbers. And then we'll take a rest and go into child's pose before we go into our next sequence. So we'll go through that entire sequence four times with holding a plank, doing those leg lifts, doing some push-ups, and then mountain climbers. Any questions about that sequence? All right, let's get I'm it. Good. All right, get into your plank position. Back is flat from head to toe. Take a couple breaths here. All right, lift right leg, tap down. Lift left leg, tap down and repeat. Alternate leg lift, keep that back straight while you're doing these. Big core strength here. All right, take it down into a push-up. Do two push-ups. And now into mountain climbers at your own pace. So pull in right knee to left shoulder, left knee to right shoulder or elbow. All right, feel free to shake it out. Let's go round two. Shake out anything you need. Back into that plank position and Let's plank it out. Take a few breaths here. All right, lift, lift right leg, lift left leg, lift right leg, lift left leg. Keeping that back straight. Nice job. Two push-ups. From here, mountain climbers. Breathe through it. All right, take a break. Take out anything out. We'll get back into it. If you need to take the plank to your forearms or straight arms, feel free to do what's best for you. Let's get back into it. Plank position. Couple breaths. All 
All right, leg lifts, right leg lifts, left leg lifts. Repeat. Two push-ups. And mountain climbers. Three, two, one, rest. One more round of those to go, shake it all out. Woohoo! All right. When you're ready, we'll start back in that plank position. Three, two, one, plank it out. Nice job, and leg lifts. Right leg lifts, left leg lifts. Alternating, keeping that back straight, back flat. Push ups. Two push ups. And after your push ups, mountain climbers. Three, two, one. Rest. Nice job. We're going to get into a child's pose here. Sit back in your heels. Arms reach forward. Elongate that spine. Big stretch through the back. I'm going to get a drink of water here. Come out of child's pose when you're ready. And we forge on. Next up, I'll walk through it again. We're going to do bird dog crunches, followed by swimmer. So bird dog crunches is in that tabletop position, opposite arm and leg raise, and then come back down. Swimmer is having your, on your belly, and then moving your arms extended straight out in front of you, up and down alternating, while you alternate your feet too. So right arm and uh, left leg raise, and then lower, and then the opposite raises and lowers. Then we'll get into a hold, so we'll lay on our bellies, use our core and our back muscles to just lift our shoulders and chest off the ground, and then we'll release, and then that'll be that sequence. Any questions about any of this? Okay. All right, so let's get into tabletop position, and let's do some bird dog crunches. So opposite arm and leg reaching out, come together, opposite elbow and opposite knee by your torso, extend and then switch. Moving at your own pace, keeping that back flat and steady, making sure that you're not dipping your head down too low or holding it too high. You want it level with your spine. All right, come down to our swimmer. So we're gonna get on our belly. Go ahead and lift opposite arm and opposite leg. Repeating. So this is engaging your glutes, your core, your back muscles. All right, next up, rest from swimmer. We're gonna go into our lift. So keep, put your hands underneath your shoulders and then hover your hands off the ground. Engage your core and your back muscles to lift your chest and shoulders off the ground. Trying to keep your legs on the ground if possible. But if you need to lift those too, feel free to lift those too. Take a few breaths here. And release. Back into our bird dog crunches next. So round two. Let's go. And alternating. Opposite hand, opposite leg. Keeping that spine straight. The crown of your head in line with your spine. 
really pulling and engaging your core here, especially when your opposite elbow and knee meet in front of your core. All right, let's go into our swimmer next. On your belly, opposite hand and leg raises. Low back muscles are extremely crucial. The core strength, the core and the back act together whenever they do anything. It's important to focus on both. All right, we can stop our swimmers. Let's go back into our shoulder lift hold. So hands underneath shoulders and then use your back muscles. Lift your chest off the ground, lift your hands off the ground. Feel those back muscles contract in a healthy way. If it feels too much, feel free to take breaks. A few more deep breaths here. All right, let's go back into our tabletop or our bird dog crunches. Go ahead. Opposite elbow to opposite knee. Spine in line. Deep breath. Nice job. All right, back down into those swimmers. On our bellies and opposite lift. Alternating, feeling those contractions, feeling yourself get stronger. Shake anything out, get some water if you need. Do some child pose now. Stretch out that back. All right. Next up, we're going to do something. We're going to go back to some downward dog, but we're going to do some opposite reaches. So what that is, it's starting from a downward dog position, hands and feet on the ground, hips up. You're going to lower into a plank position, come up to downward dog. You're gonna take your left hand and tap your right shin, come back down to that plank position, and then repeat on the other side, taking your right hand and tapping your left. So that's what's up next. Shake it out and We'll get started here shortly. All right, we'll start it out in three, two, one. So opposite hand touches opposite shin, going from plank, getting into downward dog, so that you could reach your shin. And alternating. So our last exercise that has impact on our shoulders here. Let's do a couple more on each side. All right, take it out and 
let's get into some seated core work before we get into some leg work. All right, so for our seated core work, we're gonna take both of our feet and put them flat on the ground, knees pointed up. Once your knees are pointed up, you're going to just round your back, back slight. So feet flat, knees pointed to the ground, and then round back just enough so you feel a little pull in your core. Now what you're going to do is you're going to move back and then up. So you don't go all the way back down to the ground, but just lowering your core so that you can feel it and then bringing it back up. So I'm going from like, um, I guess like a 65 degree angle to like 90 degrees, I guess 90 degrees to 45 degrees between my torso to my hips to my knees. My arms are reached forward but you have the option to put your arms behind your thighs if you need to. So, shifting your core back, pulling it forward. When you shift your core back, you wanna really pull your belly button in, and then when you bring it up, you really wanna pull your belly button in even further so that it's not a break. Are you doing it with the pelvic tilt? So I'm just moving my upper body. So I have feet flat on the floor, knees pointed to the sky, and I was sitting up, but then I'm just moving my shoulders back a few inches and my core back a few inches, and then I'm just sitting up straight. Now, um, from this um, position, so sitting up, I'm at like the top of a sit-up position. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both my arms, reach them out, and then turn them to the right so that my torso and my arms are pointing to the right, but my legs are still pointing forward. And now I'm gonna just roll back and roll forward just a few inches, back and forward, um, so that I'm hitting the oblique muscles here. On the same side? Yeah, so if you are in an upward sit-up position and your arms are forward, like, like if it. you just finished a sit-up, just move your arms to like point to like two o'clock and your torso to point to two o'clock. And then that is where we are right now. And then feel free to come to center and then we're gonna switch over to the left. So like 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock rather. And we'll do it here. So rolling our back back into a C-shape and then pushing our chest forward and pulling our belly button back. So like baby sit-ups here, hovering in this position. All right, shake that out. And now we're gonna do three full sit-ups. So you're gonna have your feet flat on the floor, knees pointed towards the ceiling. And then you're going to just do three sit-ups at your own pace. If you choose, you can put your legs in a, um, float your legs once you get to the top. So lift your feet off the ground into a tabletop position so that they're um, parallel with the ceiling. Or you can leave them planted. All right, now we'll shake it out and we're gonna get into some leg and um, bottom work here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay on your right side and use your right arm as a pillow. Legs are straight and extended out to your side. So as if you were, yep, you're just laying straight on your right side. I'm gonna put my left hand on my hip just because that's where it's comfortable, but you can put your left hand on the ground uh, if you choose in front of you. And you're gonna lift your left leg up off the ground, engage your core, and you're gonna draw tiny little dime-sized circles with your left toe in the air, counterclockwise. And when you're doing this, you wanna squeeze 
the side of your glute. So these dime sized circles have been controlled with the side of your glute. You might have to try and find that squeeze, so play around with it a little bit. And reverse direction. Now clockwise circle with your left toes, the size of a dime or a quarter. So it's a very small movement, but repeating it should add fatigue to your um, your bottom. From here, we're gonna do leg lift. So go ahead and rest your leg, and then what you're gonna do is engage your core again, lift your left leg up towards the ceiling, and then back down. Again, you should feel some tension in the side of your bottom or your hip. We, when that muscle is using, using that muscle to contract and lift. These muscles don't get singled out very often. Strengthening the side of our bottom here. All of these muscles are important for greater core strength. All right, now we're gonna switch sides. So go ahead and shake that out and then lay on your left side. Keeping your left pillow as a uh, left arm as a pillow. <laughs> Legs are straight. You can have your right hand either on your hip or rested on the ground in front of you, in front of your torso. And we're gonna go ahead and lift that right leg straight up off the ground towards the ceiling. And let's start doing dime size circles with our toe counterclockwise, engaging our glutes here. Playing around with it until you feel a pull in your glute. Play through it. And clockwise now, keeping those circles small. And lifting that leg up, now we're gonna do leg lift. So bring that right leg down and then up towards the ceiling, using your own range of motion here. Nice job. Feeling that squeeze, that pinch in your glutes, your hips. Good pinches. And shake that out. Feel free to get any water if you need. And we're gonna go in to do some hundreds. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna lay on your back. You're gonna have your feet flat on the ground and you're gonna have your arms by your side. What you're gonna do is you're gonna engage your core muscles and lift your shoulders off the ground so that your neck comes with your shoulders. And your arms are reaching forward, levitating off the ground. And you're gonna pump your arms up and down. If you wanna add weight to your arms, you can. Your arms are gonna go up just a few inches and then down just a few inches. So really engaging that core, pumping those arms up and down. And you have the option here to lift your feet off the ground so that your shins are parallel with the ceiling, or you can keep your feet down on the floor. The one difference you'll feel if you do lift those legs up is it engages a deeper uh, level of your core. Um, but leaving those feet down also engages your core in a different way. So for hundreds, Technically, you're supposed to pump 100 times. I haven't been counting, but we'll go for about 10 more. So do 10 more pumps. And then after that, rest your head. Let your arms come down to your sides. And now what you're going to do is you're going to reach your hands overhead and you're going to put your hands together. So palms touching. 
and you're going to curl your chin uh, or curl your chin to your chest, lift your shoulders off the ground, and extend your legs out straight. Then I want you to bend so that your knees and your elbows meet in front of your torso, and then extend them again. So extend arms overhead, extend feet out long. So knees and elbows touch in front of your core, and then they release behind you. So really engaging those core muscles. I feel my abs shaking, keeping those shoulder blades off the ground, releasing the tension in your neck. All right, now we're gonna let everything out. So keep those arms above your head, legs straight, and then keep those shoulders off the ground. We're gonna hold this for 10 seconds. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Nice job. All right, we're gonna get our oblique muscles one last time before we go into some big stretches. So for our obliques, we're gonna do some bicycle crunches. So you're gonna put your hands behind your head and your elbow should be pointed out wide. So left elbow pointed to the left, right elbow pointed to the right. And this is so that you don't use your arms to pull your neck up. This is so that you're supporting and all the strength is coming from your core. So you're gonna pull opposite uh, opposite leg to opposite knee. Keeping those elbows out straight so that you're not pulling on your head. And you have the option to extend the leg that is not pulling to your opposite knee. So extending it straight to mimic a bicycling motion. Opposite elbow to opposite knee. Your hands behind your head should, if anything, just relieve some tension. Shouldn't be pulling anything. All right, three, two, one, rest. All right, nice job, everybody. We are going to get into some deep stretches. We did a lot of core and back work, so we want to make sure that everything is stretched out. So I'm going to pause this music here so that we can get a nice, calm, deep stretch. So we're going to start in child's pose here. So go ahead and get into child's pose, sinking your bottom back into your feet, stretching your arms forward, elongating your spine, bringing your forehead to the floor. and taking deep breaths here. All right, when you're ready to come out of that, what you can do is seal pose or cobra pose to stretch out any core muscles, so keeping your hands underneath your shoulders, lifting your shoulders off the ground, keeping your legs on the ground. All right, then we're gonna come to a tabletop pose. So you're going to have uh, your hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. And we'll do a little bit of cat-cow here. So tucking your chin to your chest, arching your back for cat, pushing through the palms, and then going into cow, dipping your belly down, lifting your chest up. And switching through. Now from here, you're going to lift your left hand up to the sky and twist your uh, face towards your left fingertip and feel a stretch. 
And when you're ready, you're then going to take your left arm and thread it between your right leg and your right arm so that it comes to the ground, which brings your left shoulder to the ground. And you have a little bit of a spinal twist here. Taking a few breaths here. Come out of that when you're ready and we'll take it to the other side. So lifting up your right hand towards the sky to then bring your face towards your right fingertips. Taking a few breaths and then taking your right hand Sticking it between your left leg and your left arm, bringing your right shoulder to the ground and getting a spinal twist here. Take some deep breaths. When you are ready, we're going to go into pigeon pose. So I find it easiest to get into pigeon pose from a plank position. So from a plank position, you will bring your right knee to your right wrist. And then if your right foot can get towards your left wrist, great. If it can't, that's okay. Mine can't. Drop your left leg to the ground so your left leg is touching the ground completely. And then if this, it feels good, you're having to, you can lean forward and go down onto your forearm so that your wrists and your shoulders aren't bearing any weight. So dropping your right knee down by your right wrist. So both legs are on the ground, taking deep breaths. It's a big glute hip stretch. Are my toes forward or backwards? Pointing forward or pointing backwards on my right leg? Um, my toes are pointing out to my left, but they should be pointing upwards towards my hands. I just can't do that. And when you're ready, you can carefully come out of that and we can repeat on the other side. So starting from that plank position, bringing your left knee to your left wrist, resting your left leg on the ground, uh, letting your right leg come to the ground. And right leg is extended straight, coming down to your forearms so that you have no tension in your shoulders or your forearms. And then trying to get... My, my left knee is basically just completely bent. Um, there's not much space between my, um, the bottom of my leg and the top of my leg when it's bent. But if you can and you're flexible enough, getting those left toes to your uh, right elbow would be ideal. That's just not an option for me. <laughs> And when you're ready coming out of that, we're gonna go into a seated forward fold. So lifting your arms up to the sky and then bending towards your toes, reaching for your toes. taking a few breaths, and then I'm going to spread my legs out now into a wide straddle stretch, and I'm going to reach my hands over to my right leg. And then over to my left leg.
And to get deeper into my stretch, now I'm going to bend my left leg into half of a butterfly. And then I'm going to reach both hands to my right again. And when you're ready, switch. So left leg out, right leg bends and comes into a half butterfly. Both arms reach to the left leg, left toes. Feel free to come out of that. And then I'm gonna get into a full butterfly pose. So putting my feet together, knees apart. And now I'm gonna add a side bend. So I'm gonna put my right hand down by my right hip, lift my left arm up and over to the right to get a nice side bend, a nice stretch in the side and in your back. And then go to the other side. So left hand by left hip, right arm up and over. And taking a deep breath, shaking everything out. Our last stretch here is happy baby. So laying on your back here and having your legs go up towards the ceiling, bending your knees in towards you, reaching for the soles of your feet, either inside or outside of your feet, up to you. And then helping pull those legs into a deeper bend, deeper towards your sides. Feel free to rock back and forth, forward and back. All right, that is our core stability class.